Standard deviation is a tricky concept on the SAT for two main reasons. First, most students who take the SAT have not yet learned about standard deviation in their math class in school, so they haven't built up a strong habit for how to think about it. This leads to the second problem, which is that standard deviation is a bit counterintuitive, so it's easy to remember it incorrectly. Luckily, the SAT tests only the very basic ideas of standard deviation. Let's start with a definition. A complex definition might be that standard deviation gives the amount of variation in the values in a data set relative to the mean. To put it more simply, standard deviation measures the overall spread of a data set. In an AP statistics class, you would learn how to use this complex formula to calculate the standard deviation of a set. Don't worry, you never need to calculate standard deviation on an SAT. Do not bother memorizing this formula. Still, this part here represents the difference between each data point and the mean or average of the entire data set. The formula is literally averaging how far each point is from the center. A simpler way to calculate standard deviation for the SAT is to think about the spread of the data points. The greater the spread, the greater the standard deviation. For the examples on the left, the dotted line represents the mean. Notice that the curved line representing the data values is wider on the top for set A. Since it's more spread out, set A has a higher standard deviation. On the other hand, the values for set B are more clustered together around the mean. Less spread means set B has a lower standard deviation. The SAT will mostly ask us to compare the standard deviations of two data sets based on the shape of the data. For sets A and B, a correct SAT answer choice might say that the standard deviation of set A is greater than the standard deviation of set B. We would more casually say that the shape of set A is flatter than the shape of set B. We can flip this wording to say that the standard deviation of set B is less than the standard deviation of set A. We know that because, to us, set B is taller than set A. Try to remember that tall datasets have low deviation, and flat datasets have high deviation. This is counterintuitive for some people, because they want to say that something tall is greater than something short, but this is the exact trap that the SAT hopes you fall into. Let's look at some other ways that the SAT might show us datasets and ask us to compare them so that we can form a good habit for thinking about standard deviation. For these two dot plots, which set has the greater standard deviation? The correct answer is set D. Try to imagine the shape of each set. Even though set C has some outliers at two, the overall shape is still a tall peak, which suggests low deviation because the dots are clustered around the mean, which is probably around six. Set D has some ups and downs, but it's overall pretty flat. The mean might be around five or six, but it's harder to tell. Flat data sets have higher standard deviations. Let's try another one. For these two histograms, which set has the greater standard deviation? Once again, the flatter set has the higher deviation. Remember that the frequency on the y-axis is telling us how many of each data value is in the set. So for set E, there are four ones, four twos, and five threes. But for set F, there are three ones, six twos, and eight threes. Most of the values in set F are three or very close to it, which is why it has a lower standard deviation. Let's try one last example. Which of these frequency charts shows the greater standard deviation? Remember that frequency charts are showing us the exact same information as a histogram or dot plot, but without the visual representation of the frequency. Hopefully you understood that set X has a tall peak because most of the values are fours or close to it. Set Y has the greater standard deviation because the frequencies are more evenly distributed. There's no clear winner. If you have trouble seeing the difference on a frequency chart, try to turn it into a histogram. Use your scratch paper to draw bars for each value. You can even do it horizontally in the chart itself. Now the tall peak of set X is much more noticeable, as is the flatness of set Y. Standard deviation is a complex measurement, but the SAT does not ask about it in a complex way. Remember that you will never need to calculate the standard deviation yourself. You'll be asked to compare the standard deviations of two data sets. I recommend remembering it based on the shape. The flatter the set, the greater the deviation. The taller the set, the lower the deviation. If that's hard for you, then just remember that even outside of mathematics, the word deviation means spread. So higher deviation would mean more spread. Hopefully, one of these two methods will stick with you so that you can get every standard deviation question right. Thanks for watching.